Hi class, we are back in the exercises for weather and climate for chapter three, talking about temperature and climographs. And I just wanted to show you some of the cool things in this uh, exercise animation to help you kind of think more about temperature controls on climate and how we can visualize that with these graphs called climographs. So we have our world map here, and again, if you roll your mouse over a city, you'll get the climograph for it. If you click on it, that city will stick. So let's think about climate controls um, and what can explain some of these patterns that we see. So first we'll start with latitude. So we've got a string of cities in the northern hemisphere, the first being one up in Canada at 51 degrees north. We have high annual temperature range from minus 20 degrees Celsius up to 15 degrees Celsius, so a 35 degrees Celsius annual temperature range. And then if we move down to Toronto, Canada, which is at 40, about 44 degrees north, you, you can see our temperatures move up. So what we would expect as we move south, we're in the northern hemisphere, that our temperatures would increase. And now we're here, we're in Atlanta, summertime temperatures up to 25. Winter temperatures now above freezing. Havana, Cuba, all the way up where the whole year is above 20. And then Panama City, now we're even warmer. So we can see a clear trend with latitude as we move south, the temperatures go up, which is exactly what we would expect after learning about heat energy in the last chapter. Now another really important temperature control is uh, the proximity of a location to a large body of water. Water has the ability to absorb a great deal of heat energy and so acts as a moderating force with relationship to temperature. So if we look at Reykjavik, Iceland and Yakutsk, Russia, which are both at about 62, 64 degrees north, um, what we see is that we have really different temperature patterns between these two locations. Reykjavik is in Iceland, which is an island uh, in the northern Atlantic Ocean, you can see the annual temperature range is really only about 10 degrees Celsius, whereas Yakutsk, Russia, is in the middle of the continent, so it's on land, it's not surrounded by water, and the annual temperature range goes from about minus 45 to 20, so that's a 65 degrees Celsius annual temperature range. So why is that? Excellent question, because land is going to heat and cool a lot faster and a lot more intensely than water. Water can absorb a lot more heat energy. Ocean currents move that heat energy away. What we see is a much larger seasonal temperature range in landlocked areas than in maritime environments like in Reykjavik. Okay, let's move on to... Our next example, which is we're going to move inland from Dublin, Ireland, now to Amsterdam. And as we move inland, we're going to see this temperature range increase. And so now we're in Warsaw, Poland, um, in Minsk, and then in Samara. And as we move inland into the continent, you can see that that temperature range change. So that increase and temperature variability um, as we move away from the moderating force of the large ocean. Um, next we'll move to geographic position. Now we've got San Francisco and California on the coast adjacent to the Pacific Ocean, a big body of water moderating temperature. St. Louis, continental climate in the middle of the North American continent, and Norfolk, Virginia, which again is adjacent to a very large body of water, the Atlantic Ocean. But, wow, we don't quite have the, the pattern that we see. So look at the, the variability in Norfolk, Virginia. What do you suppose is going on here? Um, San Francisco has what we call a maritime climate. The Pacific Ocean has moderated the change in temperature so that there's not much variability. We move inland to San Francisco and we see really high variability, which is what we'd expect. But what happens by the time we get to Norfolk, is that because of the wind patterns across the North American continent, Norfolk actually has a climate that is not as much moderated by the Atlantic Ocean because 
our atmospheric circulation patterns are moving air from west to east across the North American continent. Um, so geographic position plays a really important role. If we look at mountains, now we're in Colorado, which we, you know, we have a big elevation range in Colorado, a lot of relief, topographic relief. So we look at Evergreen, which has an elevation about 2,200 meters, Denver about 1,600 meters, and Evergreen's in yellow, Denver is in orange, and not surprisingly, Evergreen is cooler than Denver. As we go up in elevation, our temperature decreases, so this is our annual temperature looking from January through December, and we see Evergreen is cooler. If we look at daily temperature patterns, um, again, Evergreen is cooler. So I hope that helps understand some of these temperature controls. Please let me know if you have any questions.